At first glance, it sounds like a paradox. The world is heating up, glaciers are melting, oceans are rising, and yet, some scientists whisper a chilling possibility. What if this climate change doesn't just lead to droughts, floods, and fires, but to ice? Not just any ice, but a return to a full-blown ice age. Not in thousands of years, but possibly within a few centuries, maybe less. To understand how that could happen, we have to rewind Earth's timeline. Not by decades, not by centuries, but by tens of thousands of years. Back to a time when mammoths roamed northern Europe, saber-toothed cats stalked the Americas, and human beings were huddled in caves, trying to stay alive as sheets of ice a mile thick crawled over continents. We call it the last glacial maximum, a peak in the most recent ice age, which occurred roughly 20,000 years ago. At that time, global temperatures were about 6 degrees Celsius, 10.8 degrees Fahrenheit, cooler than today. Sea levels? over 120 meters lower. You could walk from France to England, from Siberia to Alaska. The world map didn't look the way it does now, but here's the kicker. Ice ages don't begin with a sudden freeze. They begin with a warming. Yes, warming. It's the warming that disrupts the balance. And ironically, the same thing that's melting the Arctic today. An excess of carbon dioxide and heat-trapping gases may ultimately trigger the long-term cooling feedback loops that lead to an ice age. This isn't science fiction, it's science. During the last ice age cycle, small shifts in Earth's orbit, known as Milankovitch cycles, caused slight changes in solar radiation. These shifts triggered regional warming that melted glaciers, which flooded the oceans with cold, fresh water. That fresh water disrupted the thermohaline circulation, the conveyor belt of warm and cold ocean currents that regulate global climate. The Atlantic Meridional Overturning Circulation, AMOC, which today keeps Europe relatively warm, nearly shut down. The result? A plunge into cold chaos. Now fast forward to today. We're pumping more COEUS into the atmosphere than at any point in the last 800,000 years. Glaciers are melting at alarming rates. Greenland alone is losing over 270 billion tons of ice per year. And what's all that fresh water doing? You guessed it, it's pouring into the North Atlantic, right where the AMOC flows. In 2021, a major study published in Nature Climate Change found that the AMOC is now at its weakest in at least 600 years and possibly heading toward a tipping point. If that current collapses, Western Europe could plunge into bitter cold winters, North Africa could dry out, monsoons could weaken, and weather systems could spiral into chaos. In other words, a modern Ice Age starter pack. The fear isn't just academic. History has seen this before. Around 12,800 years ago, just as Earth was warming up from the last Ice Age, something strange happened. Temperatures suddenly dropped again by as much as 10 Gi Cs in some regions glaciers surged back. This event is known as the Younger Dryas, and it lasted for over a thousand years. The cause? Scientists believe it was another massive influx of fresh water, possibly from the sudden drainage of Lake Agassiz, an enormous glacial lake in North America, again, weakening the AMOC and triggering widespread cooling. Could today's melting Greenland be the modern Lake Agassiz? Some scientists think so. And if you're still thinking, well, that sounds like science from the future. Think again. A 2023 paper published in Nature Communications warned that if emissions continue at current rates, the AMOC could collapse within this century. Maybe as soon as 2057. We're not talking about ice sheets crawling over your backyard tomorrow, but we are talking about the potential collapse of the system that's kept the Northern Hemisphere livable for thousands of years. And the consequences? They go beyond temperature collapse of ocean circulation could crash ecosystems, disrupt food supplies, fuel mass migrations. It could even trigger wars over water and land as once fertile regions dry up or freeze. It's not just about cold, it's about chaos. But let's take a step back. How did the Ice Age shape human civilization? And what lessons are frozen in our past that might warn us about the future? The last Ice Age did not end with a warm breeze and flowers blooming. It ended in chaos, a sudden spike in global temperatures interrupted by violent reversals. Around 12,900 years ago, just as Earth was beginning to thaw, 
the planet was suddenly plunged back into a deep freeze. Glaciers surged, permafrost returned. This shocking regression is known as the Younger Dryas, a cold snap that lasted over a thousand years. And the trigger? Possibly a massive burst of fresh water from melting ice sheets that flooded into the North Atlantic, disrupting the Atlantic meridional overturning circulation, the very conveyor belt of heat that regulates our climate. Today, that same conveyor belt is once again showing signs of collapse. The AMOC, which carries warm water from the tropics to the North Atlantic, is slowing down. According to research published in Nature Climate Change, it is now weaker than at any point in the last 600 years. The Greenland ice sheet is melting at record speeds, injecting cold fresh water into the ocean and diluting salinity, just like it did during the Younger Dryas. And here's the terrifying twist. That ancient climate event caused temperatures to drop by 10 DC in less than a decade in some regions. Europe turned into a frozen wasteland. Massive megafauna, like the woolly mammoth, began to vanish. Human migration halted or reversed and societies collapsed long before they even had names. So what happens if this starts again? You might think climate change only means warming, but Earth doesn't follow our linear thinking. It's not just about a gentle rise in temperature. It's about instability, feedback loops, tipping points. Melting Arctic permafrost releases methane, a greenhouse gas 80 times more powerful than COSI over 20 years accelerating warming until parts of the climate system slam into reverse. Ocean currents buckle, jet streams wobble, deserts bloom where forests once grew, and snow falls in places where it hasn't in centuries. We are already seeing signs. The heat dome over North America, historic droughts across Europe, cyclones battering coasts once considered safe. And yet, despite the heat waves, the polar vortex has started dipping lower again. Texas froze in 2021 the UK saw record snow. Are these glitches in the matrix? Or the first whispers of something deeper? The last time a great freeze swept the planet, early humans had to adapt rapidly. In Gerbekli Tepe, one of the oldest known temples built around 9600 BCE, just after the Younger Dryas ended, ancient builders erected massive stone pillars in the middle of what had been Ice Age terrain. Some researchers, like Graham Hancock, and others in the alternative history community, argue that such sites may have been constructed in response to and memory of global cataclysm. Whether you accept that or not, it is clear the end of the Ice Age forged the boundaries of modern civilization. And now, we're toying with those boundaries again. Let's talk agriculture. Our entire global food system depends on stable climate zones, wheat belts, rice paddies, seasonal rains. But if the AMOC weakens significantly or collapses, Europe could enter a mini ice age while the tropics scorch and drought devastates the Sahel and India. Imagine Britain turning to tundra, Germany blanketed in year-round snow, while Southeast Asia loses its monsoon. Crops will fail, not just from heat, but from cold, floods, and erratic seasons. And it's not just about temperature. With glacial rebound, shifting rainfall patterns, and stronger storms, coastal infrastructure collapses. The Netherlands floods, Miami sinks, Karachi and Dhaka drown, billions displaced, and in the chaos, famine, conflict, collapse, and perhaps something else, a technological fall. Because when the power grids go down, when data centers fry, satellites fail, and global supply chains rupture, we may find ourselves not unlike our Stone Age ancestors, staring into the dark, wondering if the sun will return. And ironically, they were better adapted. Paleolithic humans knew how to make fire without electricity. They tracked animals, read the skies, and built tools from stone. We scroll for instructions. If an ice age came knocking tomorrow, how many of us would know how to survive one week, let alone a winter? That's not just theory. According to a 2023 paper in Science, the Earth could trigger nonlinear transitions in climate patterns within decades, not centuries, if carbon emissions aren't reined in. The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, IPCC, has warned that crossing 1.5 DCC of warming could begin to destabilize major systems like the Greenland Ice Sheet and the West Antarctic Ice Sheet. If they go, sea levels rise by 20 or 30 feet and ocean circulation halts. That could initiate a new glacial feedback loop, 
plunging parts of the Earth into regional ice age conditions while others burn. What's even more chilling is that these changes could occur with minimal warning. Geological records show that major climatic shifts, like the end of the Younger Dryas or the start of the Holocene, happened within decades, sometimes even years. We often imagine ice ages as slow, creeping things, but in reality, the Earth has flipped from hot to frozen in the span of a single human lifetime, and it doesn't need to cover the entire planet. A partial ice age, where the northern hemisphere experiences freezing conditions while the equator swelters, would be more than enough to destroy global civilization as we know it. It's not about survival of the species. It's about survival of the systems, electricity, water, food, medicine, data. These don't fare well in extreme volatility. We are now entering what scientists call the Anthropocene, a new epoch where human activity is the dominant force shaping the Earth's geology and climate. And that makes the irony even sharper. Because for all our intelligence, for all our progress, we may be pushing the same buttons that once ended an entire planetary era. The question isn't if Earth could slip back into an ice age, it's whether our actions are accelerating the clock. And before we go deeper, let this sit with you. The last time the AMOC shut down, Europe froze. This time, we're melting it from both ends. So what's waiting at the other side? Subscribe to What the Big Bang. To keep uncovering the science behind cavemen, climate, ancient civilizations, myths, and forgotten warnings buried deep in time. Because if history teaches us anything, it's that nature always keeps the receipts. We stand at a crossroads. For centuries, the Earth has enjoyed an unusually stable and warm period known as the Holocene, a name that, in Greek, means entirely recent. This slice of time, beginning around 11,700 years ago, has been the golden age of civilization. It birthed agriculture, cities, empires, and the modern world. But what if we've misunderstood the silence? What if the calm was only a pause, and the Ice Age was never truly over? To understand this terrifying possibility, we must first confront the difference between weather and climate. While weather dances erratically across days and seasons, climate moves like a glacier, slow, patient, and devastating when it shifts and shift it has. Earth's climate system is controlled by a fragile ballet of atmospheric gases, ocean currents, solar output, orbital changes, and feedback loops, each capable of tipping the balance. Now, here's where it gets interesting. Historically, ice ages haven't ended because the Earth decided to warm. They've ended, or begun, due to powerful triggers. One such trigger, during the Younger Dryas period, 12,900, to 11,700 years ago, was likely a sudden release of fresh water into the North Atlantic from melting glaciers. This influx disrupted the Atlantic Meridional Overturning Circulation, AMOC, the same system that today brings warm water north and cold water south. Shut down that flow, and Europe freezes. Within a decade, temperatures in parts of the Northern Hemisphere plunged by up to 10 degrees C. Mammoths died, forests vanished, and early humans, the survivors of fire and fang, were nearly extinguished by frost. Now fast forward to today. We are dumping greenhouse gases into the sky at a rate Earth hasn't seen in millions of years. The last time carbon dioxide levels were this high was during the Pliocene epoch, three to five million years ago, when temperatures were two to four degrees CC higher and sea levels were 15, 20 meters above today. That world had no ice caps that world drowned coasts. But here's the paradox. While we expect warming, parts of the planet could freeze. How? Because our actions are destabilizing the very oceanic conveyor belt that keeps temperate climates alive. In 2021, scientists confirmed the AMOC is at its weakest in over a millennium. A 2023 paper in Nature Communications warns that a collapse of this current system could happen as early as 2050, maybe even sooner. And if that collapse happens, Northern Europe could experience brutal cold, shifting rainfall patterns, failed crops, and a cascade of global climate disruption. So yes, climate change can bring ice, just not in the way people imagine. It wouldn't be a sudden wall of glaciers crawling across Manhattan. It would be the systems we depend on. Rainfall, growing seasons, ocean food chains, 
breaking in unpredictable ways. A new ice age wouldn't necessarily freeze the planet, but fragment it. Some regions would burn in heat waves, while others collapse into cold. Famines would return. Mass migration would accelerate. Civilizations would strain under the pressure of a planet out of balance. And in the midst of this chaos, we must ask, could it reset the Earth? Many scientists believe we're entering a new epoch, the Anthropocene, defined not by natural rhythms, but by human dominance. Our cities, machines, and carbon footprints are now a geological force. But nature has always had the last word. If the poles melt and disrupt ocean currents, if methane escapes from Siberian permafrost, if food webs collapse, Earth may once again spiral into a new climatic phase. This wouldn't be the ice age of our textbooks. It would be a hybrid monster, glacial cold in some places, blistering heat in others, all punctuated by superstorms, ecosystem crashes, and geopolitical upheaval. Sound far-fetched? In 2018, the Pentagon quietly released a report warning of climate-induced threats to national security, not in 100 years, but within decades. It included scenarios of coastal cities underwater, food wars, and mass unrest triggered by resource scarcity. The World Bank estimates that over 200 million people could become climate migrants by 2050. And while billionaires build bunkers and rockets, the rest of us are left to wonder, what does survival look like in a world spiraling out of equilibrium? And here's where ancient wisdom haunts us again. Because the last ice age didn't just reshape landscapes, it reshaped memory. Nearly every early civilization speaks of a great flood, a sudden cold, a fall from paradise. The Hopi remember a time before this world. The Zoroastrians wrote of a winter sent by the evil spirit Angra Manu. Hindu texts tell of Manu, warned by a fish of an impending deluge. We once dismissed these as myths, but now, as science and folklore meet halfway, we begin to wonder if these stories were messages. Warnings passed down in metaphor. What if the next climate shift won't be a slow fade, but a violent jolt? Geological records show Earth's climate has flipped in as little as 10 to 20 years. The Sahara Desert, once green, dried in centuries. Ancient megadroughts starved empires. Ice cores from Antarctica reveal abrupt shifts in global temperatures. These weren't gradual. They were planetary mood swings. And we're testing the system again. If you could stand outside time and look at the Earth across a million-year scale, you would see long ice ages interrupted by brief interglacial moments. We live in one now, but what if the warmth is ending? Not by nature's rhythm, but because we broke the thermostat. We have one final weapon, knowledge, the ability to measure, predict, and prepare. Satellites track polar melt. AI models simulate atmospheric shifts. Scientists warn, plead, and protest. But will it be enough? Because if climate change does bring back the ice age, not the slow, ancient kind, but the fractured, global reset kind. There will be no reset button. There will only be history. And as that history unfolds, ask yourself, are we writing the last chapter of the Holocene or the prologue of something darker? Subscribe to What the Big Bang and discover the stories science forgot, the truths myths remembered, and the patterns civilizations buried in ice. Because the past never really ends. It just waits for the right temperature to return.